So let's say I wanted to find the first 10 terms of this inductive definition. Now, um, for extra information here, I've specifically chosen an example of a special recurrence relation known as the logistic map. So this is something you can look up if you're interested, okay? Um, and this is a relatively simple model. I mean, it's just a quadratic recurrence relation, which um, actually shows for certain values of R and certain starting positions, chaotic behavior. So it's a very basic example uh, of where chaotic and chaos theory um, can evolve. So it's a nice little thing to start off with when you're looking at dynamical systems. Um, so it's, it's quite a nice thing to kind of uh, have a look at and uh, explore. But we're going to use a specific one. I've chosen R to be 4 in this case. I've got a starting value of U1 equals 0.1. Okay, so let's see what our next value is going to be. So U2 is 4 lots of 0.1, the previous term, times by 1 take away the previous term. Okay, so 4 times 0.1 times by 0.9, which gets us 0.36. So 0.36 is the second term in the sequence. U3 will be 4 lots of 0.36 times 1 take away 0.36. Okay. Which is 0.36. 9216. Then U4 will be 4 lots of 0.9216 times 1 take, take away 0.9216. So 4 times 0.91, or oh sorry, 9216 times by 1 minus 0.9216. And that gets me 0.28901376. Okay. Now, to speed this process up, okay, one way that you can get around this without having to substitute them in each time is if you press, if you put in your calculator 0.1, then press the equals sign, okay, that stores the 0.1 in the calculator's memory. Then type in four times the answer key times by open bracket one minus the answer key, okay? And then press equals and it will give you the next term 0.36. Press equals again, it'll give you the 0.9216. Press equals again, we get the next term. Then the next term, so we're gonna get 0.82193922261. Then U6 is 0.58542053874. Then we've got U7 is 0.9708133262. Then U8 is 0.11333924739. U9 is 0.4019738493. And then finally U10 is 0.9615634951. Okay. Now, this is the first 10 terms of this sequence. And what you can see is that these numbers, right, are kind of jumping around all over the place. They seem to kind of increase up to a certain number a uh, certain part and then they go back to the beginning again. They get a certain way and then back again. They get a certain way and then back again. Okay? And what you'll find, right, if you um, wanted to explore this further, um, is that if you drew y equals x, okay, and you drew uh, this as a graph, so this is 
Well, that looks, that's not a particularly good example of it, but um, here is the graph going through uh, 0 and 1. Okay, it's a parabola, or is meant to be. Mine doesn't look very good. And then what happens is that you're starting at this value of 0 0.1, it goes up to the curve and then to the line, and that gets you your second value of 0.36. Then you're putting it in again, and then you're getting your next value of 0 0.9216. Then you're going up to that value and then in again. Okay, so my example here, because of how I've drawn it, is giving you um, a value of it converging in, right? So that's not quite right. So if I try that again, Let's try that again. Should have seen that one coming. Well, it'll have to be my y equals x line. Something a bit steeper, I think. I mean, more like that, maybe. Going through 1. So if that's my starting value at 0 0.1, then we start to get this kind of behaviour. See, as it is working its way around, it kind of keeps going back in on itself as you go from the curve to the line. And you get this chaotic behaviour as it's not homing in on anything, but it just keeps on cycling around. Okay? And you can play around with this number and it will change the height of the curve because uh, it's stretching it and then you can kind of see kind of like what different values and different starting points uh, have on its effect well what effects it has if you start at different positions um, and generate that sequence